the corner. All right, guys, welcome to Ryan's Range Report. Today's video is about 308 and why you shouldn't be shooting it. Now, when I say why you shouldn't be shooting it, what I mean is obviously for the type of competition that you're seeing here. This is a practical tactical match. Um, PRS is the, the nationwide sport. Um, there's plenty of different clubs or just different events that go on that use the same type of shooting. In the video you see here, this is me uh, shooting a club match and what I have is a 6.5 Creedmoor with a muzzle brake on it. If you're watching throughout this video, you'll notice that I'm not getting a lot of recoil off of this, which makes a big difference in shooting. That way I'm keeping my eye on my target, I'm seeing where my hit or my miss goes, and I'm able to make my follow-up shots. I mean, don't get me wrong, myself, a couple of times I've used 308 for competition. Now what a lot of people are going to say is, hey, the military uses it. And you're right, the military does use 308, and they use a lot of it. But there's one thing that's different about being in the military and not being in the military, is that you get to choose. These guys don't get to choose. They didn't sit together here in this group and vote on that they were going to use 308. That's what the military provides them. You know what the military also uses? 50 counts. And then very often I have people tell me about videos of 308s being shot out to a mile. Well, I shot 300 blackout out to 1,000 yards. That doesn't mean you should. Now sure, there's plenty of reasons why you'd want to shoot a 308. You might be in a class that is restricted to 308. Your 308 rifle might be the only rifle that you have. It might be your shit hits the fan rifle. It might be because you can buy ammo at Walmart and that's fine. Those aren't the type of situations I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is what you're looking at right here. With these type of rifles, you're looking at sub half minute accuracy, low recoil, and if you're hand loading, you're getting your standard deviation between five and 10 feet per second. All right, enough rambling. Let's get down to the science of everything. First off, it's not like 6.5 millimeter bullets or something new. They've actually been around since the 1800s. Sweden, which is known for really hot chicks that seem to love to play in bikinis out in the snow, and snus, also popularized 6.5 with a 6.5 by 55 Swede. But today what I'm going to compare is 308 against 6.5 Creedmoor and what I shoot 6.5 by 47L. And what I'm going to use to compare that is Brian Litz's program, Applied Ballistics Analytics. So what I wanted to do is go online and find some different muzzle velocities that people were getting out of factory ammunition. And I found this page on snipercentral.com. I went ahead and used the most accurate rifle that they use in the test and took the averages from it. And that's what we're going to use for our 308 comparison. Using the 175 grain, Sierra Match King using Brian Litt's custom curves, I put in an average velocity of 2650 feet per second. What this program will do is you can put in different variables and it will simulate a thousand shots on a certain target. The other really cool thing that it does is you can simulate errors like your wind and your uh, muzzle velocity and how well your rifle shoots. Does it shoot one MOA? Does it shoot quarter MOA? So I went back to the Sniper Central page and saw that they had chrono the ammo and took the average standard deviation from the other velocities which was 16 feet per second. Other than standard deviation and how well the rifle shoots, all the other variables in this test will be the same. I'm going to put like a 2 mile an hour wind variance, a 2 meter range variance, and about a 2 degree Fahrenheit temperature difference. So what we're doing here is we're simulating how well you can read the wind. Because trust me, it's going to be really hard to know the exact wind over a thousand yards. It's also why I put a range variation in there of 2 meters. Your range finder isn't always going to be exact, and this is what you're going to see here when I start to do these shot simulations is that those type of things are going to make a little bit of difference. If you're shooting flatter, that little bit of error in your calculation isn't going to make a big of a difference. All right, so the rifle in the test was 0.6 MOA. So I'm inputting that here, and then I'm going to make the target a rectangle target that's 20 by 20. So it's about 1 and 3 quarter MOA. So we've put all the variables in. It's time to let the computer do its work. The probability of hitting that target is 29.6%. So what you'll notice here is most of your shots, you're missing horizontally. So let's take a look at why you're missing those shots. As you might have guessed, it's the wind. The lower BC and the lower muzzle velocity from the 308 is pushing that bullet around, which says that even if you do everything, you know, do your part, you're still going to have a harder time hitting the target. All right, so now let's see how that compares to a 6.5 millimeter. All right, we're going to use the load out of my 6.5x47 Lapua. It's a 130 grain hybrid going 2920 feet per second. Typically out at the range, I can shoot 0.3 MOA or better groups, and my standard deviation is right around 4 feet per second. Now what you'll notice is all the other variables are the same. All right, we're going to go down here and hit calculate, and let's see what the difference is as far as your percentage or probability of a hit. So we're at 
51%. So it's over a 20% increase in a probability of a hit just by changing calipers. Now I don't want to be unfair here because I am using my hand loads. So let's compare some hand loads from a 308. All right, so what I did here is I upped the muzzle velocity by 100 feet per second. I brought the precision of the rifle down to 0.3 MOA, and I brought our standard deviation with our muzzle velocity down to 6 feet per second. Now as you can see here, you're having an increase in hit percentage, which makes sense. It's going faster, it's shooting tighter groups, and then the ammo is more consistent. But you're only up to 35.9%. That still puts the 6.5 millimeter at a huge advantage with the 51% chance of hitting the target. Now to keep it really fair, let's go ahead and take a look at some factory Creedmoor ammo. Alright, so now what I have pulled up is some factory 6.5 Creedmoor ammo shooting a 140 grain Hornady Amax. I put the rifle's precision at 0.5 MOA and I put the muzzle velocity standard deviation at 15 feet per second. Even here, you're still beating the custom 308 by over 10% with a 46.9% hit probability. Alright, we're going to take a look at one more thing between the two. Here's my 6547 with 130 grain hybrid, but this time I've added an error of 5 mile an hour of wind. Now if you can see, my probability of hit has went down dramatically. I'm now at 21%. Then we head over here and look at the 308, and you're all the way down to 12.3%. So with a 6.5 millimeter, you're almost twice as likely to hit your target. So guys, I really hope this shines some light on the advantages of using a 6.5 millimeter in this type of competition. I know another big thing is going to be the price of ammo. And really guys, I've done a lot of research and I've been doing this for a long time. And premium match grade ammo in 6.5 Creedmoor and premium match ammo in 308 are going to run pretty close to the same price. And a lot of times you can find the 6.5 Creedmoor ammo cheaper. I mean honestly, when it comes down to it, you're not going to want to use core locked ammo from Walmart to shoot long range. It's just not going to get you on target, and you're going to spend more money missing the target than hitting the target. Well, guys, I really appreciate you watching this video, and I really hope it was informative and, you know, helped you make a choice when you're picking that rifle. Uh, if 308 is all you have, you know, get out there and shoot it. There's a 308 class in the Precision Rifle Series now. But if you're building a rifle, if you're picking a rifle to shoot this type of match with, my opinion is that a 6mm or a 6.5mm is going to get you a lot more hits on target. Now I know I didn't put any 6mm bullets in those tests, but I've done it before, and your hit probability is really close, if not the same, as a 6.5mm. Let me know your thoughts on the video in the comments below, and I really appreciate everybody watching.